Hello everybody, it's Thursday 7-11. This article came out yesterday. I was gonna do something on it, but I'm dealing with this D-Day stuff on the 15th, my test. I wasn't able to, to come to this, but it says here is this Comet Doom. It talks about Comet Tusincon Atlas 2023A3. It's, a, it's about to break apart. It's inevitable, according to a new study by astronomer Sanek Sakanita. Sakanita. Evidence suggests that the comet had entered advanced stage of fragmentation. He writes, and he got a, a report here. Wow, boy, this is equation. This is this is top notch. But I'll get back to that in a second. Okay, back. If true, this is a point, disappointing news. Discovered in early 2023, the comet appears to be heading for a magnificent close encounter with the sun later this year, perhaps becoming as bright as Venus in October. October. Instead, it could fall apart before it has a chance to become a naked eye object. Second, Nita argument are threefold. First, the comet failed to brighten as it approached the sun. Yeah, it does kind of look. I did find it strange the way it looks. Like... There's no dust. There's no, like all the other comets. It's just a straight. Let's take a, take a closer look. look. It's just solid. I mean, it's just a solid comet. That's the images then on, on Comet Watch. But I've been following, I've been busy following Comet 12P that I haven't been paying attention. It does kind of look strange. Just getting back to the article. Okay, second, the comet orbit seems to be affected by non gravitational acceleration. What the hell does that mean? Non gravitational. This could, could happen if, say, inner jets are pushing away at the de disintegrating nucleus because it might be from the nucleus since it's disintegrating, it's giving it extra. Think of it as it's going to warp too. Third, the comet dust, dust tail has a unusual narrow teardrop shape with a particular orientation. I'm pronouncing that wrong. Together, these observations suggest a crum crumbling falling apart comet in which increasing numbers of fragment fragmented fractured refractory solid solid stays symbol in dark porous blob of exotic shape becoming undetectable. As is generally dispersed in space, say second year. In other words, this is what, oh boy. That is a fascinating paper, says Nick James of the director of British blah, blah, blah. Second year is a very well respected in this field, so it carries a lot of weight to use this inevitable in any prediction about a comet may be unwise. So he's differing from his report. But it's definitely a testable theory and another good reason to observe the comet at every opportunity. In fact, James isn't convinced in an independent data set. He finds no evidence of really the concern about non-gravitational acceleration. This doesn't look like a comet that is fragmenting to me, he says. We'll soon find out. The comet is brighter than 10 magnitude and within the range of mid-sized backyard telescope which amateurs could find uh, can monitor the potential breakup, which is in the Leo constellation. The, the last video I put out, put out is coming from the Leo, bullseye from the Leo to Wow. Okay, first of all, who is this uh, person? Let me do a check, be right back. Okay, I'm back. I found this and I looked at it for a little bit. The volume up. This is our second interview video for our ICQ Comets and Cousins YouTube channel. I'm Dan Green, and this month we have interviewed Dr. Stanek Sekanino, Stanek who is Sekanino. a retired astronomer who is still actively doing some research on comets. Okay, that's an interview. Gotta pause it because, uh, you know what? How and when did you first get interested in comets? And where were you born? And when? I was born in 1936 wow, in a city about 30 miles northeast of Prague. I got a degree in physics and astronomy and a PhD in astronomy from Charles University in Prague. I remember when I became interested in comets. It must have been before I was 16 because I distinctly recall observing periodic comet Shomas in 1952. Okay, now this is an old timer. This guy here has been around for 1952, so he must be in his 80s. 1936, yeah, in his 80s, something. So this guy knows what he knows his stuff. The evidence of a few bright historical sun grazers arriving at perihelion more or less simultaneously. This was the condition dictated There's by a, a series of fragmentation events in the progenitors. 
So he knows his stuff. He has a, a lot of history, a lot of ancient history. So he's he, in book. This guy is the one of the best. Let's check out his other profile. Okay, I found this. He's JPL. His education. Here's the site. Profile on him. Boy, he has mucho education. Oh, he's still present. He still works with uh, JPL. But look at all these. Oh, my God. Phys look at all this right here. Area of interest. Numerous awards. Numerous books, studies, research. On and on and on. Oh, 70. This, this one right here. Is, okay. On and on and on. So, okay. So, we're dealing with somebody that has a lot, a lot of knowledge so basically we're dealing with somebody that has a lot of knowledge something like that like a library for astronomers so this guy knows his business knows what he's talking about and he still works with nasa jpl now let's take a look at his studies a little bit of his studies i mean i would read all this some of it might make sense to me if i could pick up one percent talks about production of water right here let's see what sticks out okay i just jump into the the orbit on the paper number right here it talks about when it was discovered by all these observatory major major big boys these, this is what i call the big boys as a result at the time of this writing the observed are of the old orbit equal close to 24 month observation one would expect that the orbital elements including the semi major axis would should by now been determined with high accuracy. Put my glasses on. I had a difficult time. As described in some detail and following the inspection published, suggests that indeed, even though there, there is a glitch. I went all the way to the bottom. I get, see, I don't have the time to do this because of the situation I'm involved with, which is preventing me to focus. Honestly, I'm, I'm so out of focus. But this here, this when he darkened this area, basically what Space Weather described right here at the bottom of the page. Solid, stay assembled in dark, highly porous, exotically shaped blob that eventually become undetectable as they generally disperse in space. One can only speculate that some of the largest of these blobs could possibly be look like um, what's that? Umaluma? Hmm. Ay, uh, yeah, yeah. The comet known as Oumuamua, Hawaiian for visitor from afar, sailed through our solar system in 2017 and right away made news. Its small size, barely longer than a football field, and strange elongated shape made it an odd cosmic spectacle. Okay, so he makes reference to that. Isn't that. Well, it's not special. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw some comedy into this because that's some some heavy duty stuff. Let's check out JPL. See the solution date here. Okay, I don't see no code. Observe 4872. Labs observed on July 5th, right here. And the Moab. Oh. Moab is point. 275171 which is approximately 25 million miles give or take but the closest it was supposed to be checking out the 3d orbit it's put in months they say the closest it was going to get is on on october 13th so let's take this to october 13th so the distance on october 13th is 0 0.473 which is okay 0 0.73 which is three forty this rounded off 44 million miles away but the moab is saying 25. okay no okay well this is going to take some um keep an eye on it the article it's in on space weather i'll provide a link on the bio but what will help this comets are seen from the northern hemisphere only near perihelion because of their high southern declinations. Well, neither the number of comets nor the observations. So this guy knows his stuff. I'll provide a link on his bio. Uh, so this guy knows what he's talking about. This is one of the major, major heavy hitters in this field. So what we have here, if it does break up, remember 73P, how it fragmented. Now what would help him with his data would be if he had access to the Webb telescope Hubble and the other big boys to observe close-up images 
because the Spitzler showed us, and I'll come back with that, showing the 73 when it broke apart, how it rode the magnetic line. Here's what I'm talking about, 73P. This is the Spitzler spacecraft, which they retired. Which one, They were open. They used to show us stuff. When we used to do Comet, see, this was invisible. So when the Comet fragmented, it rode this invisible I don't know the term, like a railroad track. But there was a lot of fragmentation because I remember, because I covered it intensely, data's lost, been wiped out, which shows the breakup. You know, pieces scattered. I mean, a lot of it did ride the magnetic line, but many pieces broke apart, and a lot of these fragments almost hit us. We almost, we, I mean, they dodged us. It was like 67, 100 something fragments, and it just missed us by an inch. If this was to happen, especially if we're coming in from the the Leo Virgo, well, you know what? I'll come back because this is this is heavy now. Bedfather out.